that's nice. What's up, guys? It's Rev J. Come to think of it, this might be the first, possibly the first, at least the first with me on screen. Uh, video I've done, Sans Beard. If you haven't watched the video where I went ahead and finally clipped it off, go check that out. It's on the channel. There's actually a bunch of new stuff on the channel, some new goodies for the Yukon, and as a matter of fact, that's actually what we're talking about today. I bought another little present for the Rebuild Everything Yukon. This one, though, it's something I've needed for a while, and it's gonna have some pretty good impacts on the other stuff that I've got. Got, got, got. So I've got the 66 C10, and as much as I love driving it everywhere, sometimes it's got to get on a trailer, and conveniently enough, the Rebuild Everything Yukon, that's a pretty good vehicle for that. Except it lacks one feature that all you guys with the new stuff, like 2013 and up, have built in, and that is a trailer brake controller. So I went ahead and picked up this unit from Takansha. This is the Takansha P3, part number on top there is 90195. Now you guys with the real new trucks, like 2013 and up, have the luxury of having all of your trailer brake controls built into the onboard control units. However, if you have an older truck or a swap vehicle, you've gotta go ahead and run an external unit like this. The basic idea is that this uh, has sort of an accelerometer in it, and it measures the speed with which you are stopping and applies a proportional force uh, in terms of a voltage output signal to your trailer to tell the electric trailer brakes exactly how much to stop. Now I went ahead with this unit because it'll actually do regular electric trailer brakes and it will also do electric over hydraulic trailer brakes, which is really nice because you never know exactly what you're gonna get into. Uh, and this unit here came extremely highly recommended uh, to the top of Amazon in terms of trailer brake controllers. It's well reviewed on all of the hauling and trailering sites that I took a look at. I also went ahead and grabbed a 3015-P. This is a plug and play wiring harness for GM brake control. Uh, my 05 Yukon would use this one. This is 03 to 07. And it's just a nice little factory style uh, shielded cable with all the correct plugs. We'll take a good look at this again in a second and once we get around to installing it. But for now, let's go ahead and pop this out of the box, see what you get and see what it looks like. All right, well, here is the unit itself in a nice little carrying pouch because this one is actually quickly removable, uh, which you'll see here on this bracket. This is the quick disconnect bracket. It's got little indexed marks there where it snaps onto the body of the brake controller and has a little adjustable bracket on top. If you don't want to go with the quick release option, they also go ahead and include an old school just a uh, flat metal bracket with the proper holes. Both will allow the correct amount of tilt to fit up to your dash. But again, this is the quote unquote permanent. This is the quick disconnect unit. They do include a little generic wiring harness here. This is universal if you don't buy the specific plug and play harness like I got over there. It's a regular flat four pin style connector that mates into the back of the unit and has four unterminated wires that you need to go ahead and properly hook up. Now, I don't really have to worry about that because I bought this. And as you can see, it's got the same flat four on this side, uh, but this side here uses the GM style. Let's see if you can get it there. Uh, the GM style sort of Molex plug, this will plug directly into the trailer wiring interface under my dash. We'll take a look at more about this in just a few seconds. And here in our fancy carrying case, we have the Takancha P3 main unit itself. And there it is. Focus, there you go. On the front, you can see the readout screen that is a little uh, variable color LED readout screen. Our navigation buttons here increase and decrease. These will also help us navigate the menu. This is the boost button. We'll talk a little bit about that more uh, once we get around to installing this thing. But the basic idea is it lets you add a proportional amount of extra boost to your trailer brake control. Um, and that's one of those things you'll have to get dialed in once we get around to doing all the other settings on this. You've also got sort of the menu button here. This again will help us access the menus, recall saved settings, and do some navigation. The other feature right away you'll see on the bottom is this little lever right here. That is a manual engage. It's designed for helping test the trailer wiring. When you go ahead and pull this, even if the vehicle isn't moving, there's no inertia, no momentum, it will lock the trailer brakes up so you can make sure they're fully working. Uh, that is actually really important. You don't wanna have to be going 25 miles an hour before you realize that when your trailer brakes fails, you can just go ahead here and manually engage it. This thing's got some heft. The bottom is solid cast aluminum probably weighs two, two and a half pounds, with the top portion being all plastic here. This here is one of the little indexing places, as there is on the side, 
for that quick disconnect bracket that I mentioned a little bit earlier. Let's see if you guys can see here if it focuses. There we go. This just snaps right down and there. And now the brake controller is technically removable. Uh, this would go ahead and bolt to your dash something, you know, sitting like that. You're done, you don't wanna leave it in the vehicle overnight or you're in an area where maybe it's not gonna be being used. Go ahead, pop the sides free. They loosen up like that and it comes right out. It's a lot easier to do when this thing is mounted. So the construction seems pretty nice. I mean, it's nothing super fancy. There's our wiring connector on the back uh, for our harness here. Again, the flat four goes right in there or the generic wiring if you were to use it. So, there's the body of the unit. We've got our brackets, we've got our wiring harnesses. I read over the instruction manual real quickly just to take a look at some of the bonus features, like I said. I just got the new season of Buffy on DVD and I'm gonna kick it in my crib and watch the bonus features. The boost control, uh, changeable settings, we've got things like uh, selectable colors. All that though has to get set up once this thing is powered up and in a vehicle. So the next logical step, let's take this thing out to the Yukon and uh, mount it up. It's cold as hell, it's like 18 degrees right now. I'm not super thrilled. Uh, but luckily this install should go pretty quickly from this point on because everything is pretty much plug and play. Like I said, because I got that plug and play wiring harness, it means I'm not terminating wires, running stuff through the firewall, doing any of this. So I'll show you guys that. We'll get the lead for that hooked up and run, and then we can mount the actual unit itself. All right, well we're here under the dash of the Yukon, and all the way on the left side, you can see this little box down here. Now under that is a bunch of pretty interesting stuff that is gonna be useful to know if you're gonna have one of these trucks for a while. You can go ahead and pull this cover off. It's just got a thumb screw right on it here. And that, come on, comes right off of there. And then you guys can see if I can get the camera in here, we have this little sort of uh, junction block that has a bunch of, uh, of wiring harnesses and plugs going into it. That can, it's on a hinge here, come on way over on the side, it's really hard to see. Uh, and that can actually drop this down and out of the way if you need to. But for what we need, we just need these two up here, actually just this one. If you'll notice, that matches up perfectly uh, to this plug we have here on the end of our plug and play wiring harness. And of course the other end is the one that lines up uh, perfectly with the back of our trailer brake controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this harness in Okay, so when I run it over there, now you can see it is coming out on the far side here, exiting a bit more to the far right side of our dash. I'm gonna secure that with a couple zip ties. Before I do that, let's go ahead and lay out our mounting position uh, for the bracket here, which of course is gonna affect where that brake controller sits. These under dash locations are pretty typical. We just need to accommodate for the angle of the dash. Okay, here's that bottom side of the dash there. And I'm thinking, based on the size of the controller, we're gonna wanna put it right about there, as far over to the right as I can uh, to not interfere with my leg. You know what, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna hop in here and just test our clearances to see if that's gonna work. Okay, so I'm sitting in a pretty natural seating position. I'm tall and my seat's pretty far back, but you can see there's still a good amount of room here. At no point is my leg really gonna be up here for any reason, which gives us plenty of clearance to fit the trailer brake controller. Also makes it easy to grab with my right hand if I need to hit that uh, emergency button or make any changes. Also makes viewing of the display a lot easier. My viewing height's a little bit more up here. Uh, so I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and get the bracket marked out and we can screw this thing into place.
All right, guys, so the trailer brake controller is in. You can see it's down there. We got it all wired up and everything like that. Plug and play is so easy. It was definitely worth buying that nine or $10 harness so I didn't have to strip a bunch of wires and run them through the firewall or do any of that stuff. Uh, simply just get it hooked up to that junction box using the plug, run it over and uh, drill a couple holes to put the bracket in. Power is on, Takancha P3. Zoom in there a little bit. There we go. So we know it's getting power, all the wiring works. Press any key to continue or a key to continue. There we go. Display, setup, brake type, all that good stuff. Of course, help. We can go into display if we want and adjust things like brightness, color, contrast, all those things to fit the way I want it to work and look in my truck. Uh, and of course, no trailer connected. Well, that's right. If we want to do much more with this thing, we've got to have a trailer hooked up to it. And I think we'll save that for another video. Just wanted to give you guys a quick look at the Takancha P3, how it connects into these GM trucks. I think we'll come back in another one and get it all hooked up to a trailer, set the boost settings, play around with it. As always, guys, check out all the content I have up on the channel, uh, the stuff on the Rebuild Everything Yukon, stuff on the Hatred Copter C10. There's always way more coming. Let me know in the comments below what you guys want to see. Like, comment, and subscribe. I gotta go dig up a trailer and get this thing all hooked up so we can test it out. Any suggestions? 20 foot, 24 foot dovetail? I don't know, I've never bought a trailer before. I know I want twin axles and I think I want 10K axles, but I, I see 7,500 all the time. I don't know, I don't have a lot of experience with it, so toss it in the comments below. Let me know what you guys are using. Follow me on social media. I'll have all that here on the screen. Again, check out all the new stuff, more on the Yukon, more on everything. I'm rambling, which as always means it's time to end this one. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. I'm gonna go inside and warm up. It's cold outside.